First Corinthians. If you don't take that, I'm not reading verses. Uh, uh, page 8, that's all the page 8. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. The cross symbolizes, is a symbol of sacrifice. Amen? It's a symbol of sacrificing things. And to them that perish, it's foolishness. Many times, cross is foolishness. Cross often looks foolishness. But to us, which are saying, the cross is the power. That's what brings power. Amen. 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 So, you see me, like it's foolishness for me to be a pastor. You understand? But it releases power. The foolishness brings power. The apparent foolishness. Now, I would say that, where is he? If this gentleman has to move from, uh, what's the place? No, like Birmingham to Paris. It's foolishness. I mean, you are there, you've got your house, you've got this, mortgage, whatever, this, that, that. It's foolishness to move. I mean, at this stage of your life, you are not just starting life. It didn't just start life. Huh? It didn't just start. It's foolishness. I mean, you're disturbing somebody's life. That's what I'm trying to explain to you that the preaching of the cross or the talking about sacrificial things. And the preaching of giving up your life, it is foolish. That always sounds foolish. But that is what releases the power. But I said, to us which are saved, it is power. Hallelujah. When I tell my story, sometimes it looks so vast. long ago that, oh, Bishop, this, that, you know, the church, oh, you, this, you are different. But everybody who is being released into the work of God, the power only comes when they are able to give up something. That's right. Yes. Power comes when they're able to give up something. Yes. And that is a certain power. All these people are from the UK. This one is in Spain, Barcelona. Where were you living in England? Northampton. I said, go, go. We went. This one was in where? Plesto. I said, go. It's in Hamburg. These are Swiss children, no? This one, Pastor Kweku, he is. Uh, generous, I sent him to how many countries have I sent you to? <laughs> Seven countries. Where? <laughs> Colombia, <laughs> Ethiopia, <laughs> Congo, <laughs> Nigeria, <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> Everywhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ready. Now. Yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ready now. I know. <laughs> that's what brings his power. But you see, okay, you go there. <laughs> it's a difference. Even though we are all holding the same, we are reading the same verses. It's a completely different thing. So, I'm talking to the young guys. Eh? Some of you young guys, you are more able to sacrifice. Or the old guys are also ready to sacrifice. Yeah. 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 See? You must be, that's what we release. That's what I mean. I'm interested in young people who are ready. Yeah, when you come to our church in Africa, you don't see an old people yeah. and even I mean politicians. No politician in our church. So this kind of message is I mean there's no important person in our church, only us.
to produce. Power to release. Power to grow. Rick Joyner said something. He said that the church only advances on the wheels of sacrifice. If there's no sacrifice, there's no real advancement. It can't really move forward. You can only have church, people jump from lighthouse to this church, from that church to this church. But real increase, it comes through sacrifice. Somebody has to pray. Somebody has to fast. Somebody has to do different things. And the power will be released. Amen. Amen. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 26, it's right there on page 9. When the king of Juan saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through to the king of Edom, but he could not. You see, he could not break through. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead. And he offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. You see, that is a, an example of someone who sacrificed his son. And it caused a great, it, it was something. It was something so nasty. And, but it turned back the arms. It turned back the arms. What he couldn't break through, he could break through now. Because of the sacrifice. That he did. Amen. 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 Are you there? Yes. Today we have church in Jamaica, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Grenada, and where? Brazil. Brazil, Venezuela. Because of Pastor Robert. Yeah. yeah. Because Pastor Robert, I could send him. <coughs> I could say, go. And he will go. There's no question. And now he's ready. I called him, I said, come here. I said, okay, should we start packing? Now, it's very flexible. 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 That's some of us. So I started to work on Pastor Jimmy's plenty. So I sent him that text. I said, you will be a good missionary. You and Anita, very good missionaries. I just pictured them in Kogu, walking to the streets of Kogu. <laughs> <laughs> Now go to page 11. The power to make people follow you. Amen? Amen. President Rollins is a good example of that. Those of you who know him. He made a lot of people follow him. Lord, yes, what have you? Rollins has had a lot of followers. Although he is not educated. He didn't go even to sixth form. Some of our politicians just come and read speeches that are when they really make they make a mistake, they say something about it for them. And you sense the lack of whatever. But he he stood and he said, I am the one. You should kill me and release all the guys. He's the one who did the good. It's part of people following him. It's a fact. It's not a principle that is it works. People lay down their lives, people follow them. True. There are people who look at me preaching, they feel like I don't know how to preach. One day we said somebody was watching me on television. Just, uh, is this preaching? <coughs> Just turn it off. So somebody may feel that I, I don't know how to preach. I don't know if that's what you think. But fine. But there's some power working. Yeah. When I have camps, when I have camps, ah, you see people change their destiny. Ah, yeah. well, their yeah. destiny changes. Mm. I can show you so many people. Yeah. All of them. Mm. You see, the power is moving them. Mm. Say you are anointed. Come and let's prepare those. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, the power to make people believe. Number 17, chapter 17, power to make people believe. People believe you. When you sacrifice, they will believe you more. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Number three, the power to induce commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. What did Philippians say? 3 7. It says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Doubtless, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dance. 
that I might win Christ. Why was Paul suffering the loss of all things? Because Christ suffered the loss of all things. Christ suffered the loss of his life. And when you see somebody who has suffered everything and has lost everything, it induces his followers to also leave everything and follow. So Paul also followed Christ. He said, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but down. And since then, so many people have followed Christ and are following him still. Amen. Amen. As I'm in the ministry, I was a doctor. I am a doctor. Several doctors have followed me. <laughs> and I followed my example. In fact, I'm not like in the hospital because of that. <laughs> one, one, one of my assistants, Dr. Go, in the crusade, uh, somebody said to him, I lost all respect for you when I heard that you were following that he was yours. Nice. So, one of the professors told him, I lost all respect for you. I thought you were good. You are a very excellent doctor. This, 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 that, and that. Till I heard that you were following this boy. <laughs> yes. You see that it induces people to follow. Amen. That is why I want Pastor Jimmy to set a good example Amen. so that it will induce the rest of you to follow. Wow. That's it. It's true. When we start, we have one, two, three, four. We start to say, people look and say, what is sweet? It's not, I'm going here, I'm going here, I'm going, I'm going to work for the Lord. See, but in, in London, they have damn London who walked out. Oh, what is London? Oh, what shame, 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 shame on London shame who walked out. But here, we say, Switzerland is everything. Hey, everything. Shame on you are everything to me. Hey, Geneva. W-H-O, U-N. I can never leave you. You are everything. There is none like you. Oh, W-H-O. Yeah. Poverty works is sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
from you, so you never understand what is happening. Like, a lot in front of the door for your brain. But you must open your eyes, otherwise you won't see it. So, induce commitment. That's what I've learned as a leader for yourself. Mm. That's top, top, top. Go. Go. Mm. Commander, you go yourself and put yourself in danger. Mm. And people will also follow you and also put themselves in danger. Mm. But the whole thing is about putting yourself in danger. Yeah. Why do you want me to go? You won't go. <laughs> go and let us see that you put yourself in danger. Me, I would have gone as a missionary long time and God told me, stop. You have to stay here and send the people from here. And I said, I've gone myself just to show. Next time, I'm not afraid of uh, it. Whatever will come, should come. I, 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 I look at my children now. So the other day, a couple of weeks, I was with them somewhere. I just look at them and said, if I, if I die, I've done my best. I commit them to go. Sometimes, the way you are dead, you turn out better. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I just trust God. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> There is no Yeah. 
I get it. You like that's it. why sometimes, that's what I was telling Jimmy, you see, in everybody's life, you have a course that was supposed to go to. Yeah. When we were coming from the airport, I was sharing with them. Yeah. We're going to be the final person. Joanna said something. It's, it, Paul told him in the beginning that I finished my course, but I did not fulfill the highest purposes of God for my life. Yeah. And I was trying to understand, and I realized to finish your course means you went here, 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 here. All the places you were supposed to be, you went. But at each place, there is a purpose there. You see, like if you take Pastor Robert, he was in Geneva, then he was in Trinidad, then he was in Brazil. Is that not so? Or I should say he was in London, then Belgium, then all these places. Now, at each of these places, let's take, for instance, Trinidad. What did he do there? He has opened the door for the church to come there. Pastor Robert went to extensive investigation and interview. Because they could not understand his, his background. You are from Ghana, with another country passport. You are trained as a pharmacist, but you are a pastor. I mean, you do this, but you are saying everything is different. <laughs> 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 speaks different language, you speak French, but you are from Ghana. You speak English, and so you speak this, all kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> but what did he do? Within the Trinidad, you see, the books, my books are spread throughout the Caribbean. He went to almost 200 different islands. Wow. Yeah, so many places. <laughs> Pastors have invited me, listen, read my books. They have been so blessed. In Brazil, he's there doing the same thing, books. Publishers started a check, opened the door. Pastor Robert opened the door for people to come there. So you see that in one place, he's doing several purposes. But you have to finish your course also. So maybe God wants you to be in Geneva. After that, he wants you to go here. After that, he wants you to be here and to be there. That's the full course. If you die early, you may not finish your course. But even when you finish your course, you may finish your course, but even within the course, you don't fulfill the purposes within the course. Wow. You understand what I'm talking about? So you may be here, but there is a reason why you are here. There is, it's a phase of your life. And there are things that are supposed to happen in that spot on the course of your life. So I was explaining that, yes, Pastor Jimmy first was in Geneva. He was a drama, he was this, he was this. Then for Basel for eight years. Then to Zurich for seven years. Then to Geneva. You see, but Geneva may not be the last stop, but I don't think it's the last stop in the course. So that one day he can stand before Jesus and say, I also finished my course. And at each step, one of the things Jimmy has done in the last eight years, he has he stood and defended me. Pastor, and defended the church. That's right. It's it. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell you something that you see, there are different reasons. You may think that oh, he's he's there to pastor the church. But you see, apart from pastor, there are other purpose that God has also raised to defend me. And to be an unbendable uh, pillar at that time. And then at another time, something. And then each, at each point, there are different things you may be doing. Yeah. So please, I beg all of you, make sure you finish your. Some of you, you, you have re, re, rigidified yourself that I cannot move from this point. So your course is. Lord, if you have any course, let it be localized around this <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. So Paul said, because when, we, when he told Rejoinder in the vision that he didn't fulfill most of the purposes of God and so on, Rejoinder said, well, please, what you are saying is difficult to, I mean, you are, you are, you are just trying to be humble. He said, no, he said, no, I'm serious. He said, with utter seriousness in his face, Paul looked at him and said, I did not finish, I did not do most of the purposes, the highest purposes for which I was given. I said, I was giving my life, didn't use all of it. He said, but as for finishing, I did finish my course, but I did not fulfill many of the purposes. So, Duke, I know you came from, was it Koto, uh, uh, Koto, Koto, where? Adabraka? To here, is it all tapes department? Tapes department, to this, to this, to this. You see, there is a course. You see, and many of us get stuck because the next step often in our lives, there's a bit of pain, or there's some change, or there's some losing. Especially the losing part. Especially if you've been deceived by the glamour and the glitter of this place. 
Oh, I want to get 25 people to send to Germany. Amen. Just from here to Germany, not far. That you go and live there and get a job there. They we are here, this light has got to be If you go to Zoom, you see the same thing. Go to Geneva, Lausanne, we are bringing one here to Bremen. To, to here, to here, to here, to here, all over. You are in this world, right? Yeah. yeah. And this is a brother, what is this? Odro, Odro, you are where? Cologne, also with this order. Yeah. Yeah. Jerry is coming to Frankfurt. <laughs> Are you people understanding what I'm talking about? Yeah. Don't get stuck on the way. You know when they had a vision? In the vision, years ago, this was at the very, very beginning. It's one of my first visions. I wrote in my book. I wrote in a book. One of the chapters is 20 visions which changed my life. This is one of them. I was spoken on a road like this, winding like that. When I got to a point, I saw a heap, like look at a heap of sand. When I got to the heap, I was surprised it was not sand, it was gold. Gold like powder, like coins. And I said, What? I've discovered my life. Whatever. So I just, and the Lord said, No. Don't stay. Take some that you need. And just continue. Say, on the path that I have called you, there are many of such heaps. Mm -hmm. Just you keep on what I'm calling you. This is not stay here. So I continue. And along the road that God has called me, several times you see that heap. Yeah. That's why even I cannot even declare the blessing that God has given to me. Because it was true. That vision was true. Wow. Yeah. So my friend, wow. some of you go to your first heap. <laughs> it's easy to be like you want to hold it. Hold me close. Never let me go. <laughs> <laughs> Never let me go. Never let me go. Sing the song. Where's your microphone? <laughs> hold me close. Let your love surround. Sacrifice to come. There are three main people who are against the sacrifice. Amen. The first Amen. person is the Antichrist. Amen. Notice on page 25 in verse 10, chapter 8, verse 10, it says, Then I heard one saint speaking, hmm? and another said, How long shall be the vision according concerning the daily sacrifice? And the transgression of the sin of desolation. Desolation. To give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. How long? You see, this is that what is desolation? What is something desolate? What does it mean? It's empty, dry, dead, black. You get it? Turn to page 23. Daniel chapter 8, verse 12. It says, And the host was given a, a him. Against the daily sacrifice, this is the Antichrist, against sacrifice, by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. And arms shall stand on his path, Daniel 11, verse 31, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. God is, Satan is trying to pollute our strength. Mm -hmm. And shall take away the daily sacrifice. And they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. 
Now, this is why what the devil's plan is for the Swiss church to be desolate. Mm. Yeah, that's the plan. Desolation. Yes. No happiness here, no flow, no greatness, just desolation. And how? By taking away daily, which are like simple, small, small sacrifices. That's what I'm talking about. Coming here is like it's a problem for you. Coming here is this, is that, is that. And what I, look, I am also a reasonable person. I know that there are times you cannot get away from work and it will be even dangerous for your job for you to leave. I understand all those things. I'm a, job, I'm a medical doctor. The school that I've been to, most of you have not been to that school. Don't take me for granted. And I came to Switzerland before most of you, if you don't know. Yeah. But what I want to tell you is that there is also something which is not a real reasonable excuse. It's way beyond that. It's not something you cannot change or something you can It's just that you don't want to do it. Yeah. And there is a lot of that here. That's right. That's right. And that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. When you really want to do it, you can do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes. I don't want to cook and I, I can't cook and I won't cook. Yeah. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not unreasonable. If I was unreasonable, there would not be a lot of people following me. If I was unreasonable, a lot of people would not have left their jobs and whatever and followed me. If I was an unreasonable monster. I'm telling you, if I was a reason, people would not just trust me and say, go here, go here, go here. They just leave their job, they leave their whatever. If they, they think people are not watching me carefully, all the people that have been with me since 1988, Bishop Saki and his wife and, and families, we have all been together, the same group. If we were so unreasonable and so, so monstrous and so animalistic, you think so many people would be following us? Think about it carefully, my friend. I am addressing an evil spirit that is here. And I will not back down from it. And I will apologize. And that is what is causing desolation here in Switzerland. Why should we come here and not feel happy to come here? Why should I not be happy? Feel happy? Feel happy. The first run that I ever started in the world since I was born in this world, this Geneva. Why should I not be happy to come here? Do not be the joy of my life, friends, and this is where my first, because my, the grace of God on my life has been branches, and this was the first one. Because I don't have such happiness to result, this is my original home. I started the check myself personally. Address it, Bishop. Want to change, address it. I'm saying it. He says, the abomination that brings desolation. Is taking away the sacrifice. Yeah, stopping it. Daily. I'm talking about big sacrifices. Daily. I don't got a big one that you go and die big with daily ones. <laughs> that you can't do it, huh? Yeah. And, and that, that's what's also spoiling the child. I can't sacrifice to take a train and go and come. Yeah. If I take a train, I'll eat my tithe. I'll use my tithe to pay for the Parents train journey. And so that's why that's so now I decided to close down all those churches. Just close them down because they, 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 want, they cannot sacrifice and nobody can sacrifice here again. So the desolation creeps in. Because as I've come here now, after I finish, I'm going to have a meeting. Any church which is far, you cannot go, you can close it. That's it. So desolation. Deso what is the meaning of desolation? Have you found it? Is this in the book? Oh, okay. Read it. Uh, empty, forgotten, dark, rejected. Say it slowly. You are saying it too fast. Mm. We are not. We are not remembering all the words you are saying. Mm. It means destitute, mm. barren, empty, barren. You see, the church is going to become barren. The fruits that we were having, the branches, they are all closing down. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm also, I'm also, I'm, I cannot also sustain it. Yeah, so, so it's coming empty. Instead of, instead of being full of churches. When Reverend Ademoye came here from Nigeria, he made a comment about, he said, what you people are doing here, it can never happen in Nigeria. How people sacrifice, go, he was amazed. He has never seen anything like that before. And the foundation of this ministry, which is the lay people and people sacrificing, that's what's being taken away. And what does it lead to? Desolation. Barrenness, emptiness. Forgotten. Read them, you read them. Dark. Rejected. What was the word? Rejected. Rejected. Mercy. 
him and dejected. Desolation is a feeling of, if you refer to desolation in a place, I'm reading from a dictionary, it, you mean that it is empty and frightening. For example, because it has been destroyed by a violent force or army. We look out upon a scene of desolation and ruin, empty and frightening. Even when I came to today and I landed the camp, I did not have that feeling of whatever. I just felt it's like, what is this? And I said, I organize myself, okay, let's go to war. Come and fight and go. But you see, it should not be. So I'm, I'm telling you, we've got to change it. Otherwise, there's a certain barrenness. You see, there's a certain emptiness to associate with you. will be upon you. Yeah, and me, I will not struggle. My children, I told you my father, one day I was talking to my father, and my father said, what did my father say? You are not a child. You are not, yes, I was asking, I said, give me this land. And he didn't say anything. Then, then later I asked him again, I said, the land. <laughs> <laughs> and I had forced him to answer. And his answer was, you are not my own child. And I wanted to know, you are not my own child, I'm not my own children. I have plenty of others. Yeah. <coughs> Set up. Because when daily little little sacrifices stops, I can't play the piano free, I have to charge. I can't play the guitar free, I have to charge. I can't come early and open the door unless you, you have to hire me. You have to pay my transport to go from here to here. I have to do this. Everything I do, my car tires. When I come to Lausanne every day, my tires are wearing out. My car uh, insurance is going higher because the mileage is going up. My this, this, that. My car is that. I have to pay train. I want more. I need this. I can't. I'm tired. This and that. All those things, fine. I agree with you. Take it away. You are left with desolation. That's yeah. what's happening. That's true. And Pastor Jimmy, Pastor Jimmy is almost 60 years old. You may not know that. He looks, he looks, he looks even younger than younger than me. He's almost uh, 60 years old. Yeah, and he has been doing this work not as a, 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 a 30 something year old person or even 20s. Up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. You see, and, and some of us look at us. And all of you young, young people, we better sit up and go. We are getting older, so we need younger people to be pastors. We can't do this work forever. Are you listening to me? Young people, so you better become spiritual. Come to us, Bishop. So, who is the first person who is against the sacrifice? The Antichrist. Yeah, no, so can you now, imagine this? Book. What is happening in Switzerland? You see, the same spirit of the Antichrist is fighting. How is it fighting? It's fighting the foundation of the whole ministry. It's under threat. What has carried us, what we have supported ourselves on, to have a church in Alton, a church in Bern, a church in Lausanne, a church in Basel, a church in where? Luzern, church in Zurich, St. Gallen, Winterthur, Chateau City we were supposed to have a church. All those places, it all has to close down because there's nobody ready to pay the daily sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. Good, good. The second person who is against the sacrifice is no other than Judas Iscariot. Page 27. Somebody should open the doors. It's getting hot. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas is carried, Simon's son, which should be trained. Why, 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 oh, why, superfly? Why was this, not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Judas was against this whole thing that was done. You can sense who somebody is by the way the person reacts towards precious sacrifices that are made. 
Yes. And towards even gifts that are being given to pastors. Why should he have that? Why should he not? Why? Why not? Why not? Why not? But you see, who is it who was against the sacrifice of Mary? No other than who? Was it Thomas? Was it Peter? Is it Judas? These are two characters. We have seen the Antichrist and now we are seeing Judas. They are both against people sacrificing things. And I can you believe that I have in my church one of my little secretaries who worked with me. When she was coming to Fulton, she finished university. She had first class. She said, I just want to work with Bishop. She has worked with me now for like six or seven years. Some one of her pastors went to talk to her. She said, No, 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 it's not a good idea. Don't do this, do this, do this, do this. Go and do this. Yeah. You see, what I'm trying to say is that Judas was a pastor. And he was advising somebody. This is a waste of their money. It's a waste of your time. First class, university, this, this, this. It's a waste. So that missionaries should be going. So be careful. They'll be advising the pastors who not say not satans. No satans. Do you satan? No satans. Pastors. <laughs> so you may think, but I see because sacrifice looks like foolishness. Yeah. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when you take away sacrifice, you bring in their soul nature. Mm. True. That's right. The third person. Who is against? I'm giving you three people who are against that, and all these characters, I don't think you like to emulate any of them. No. No. The third person is no other person than Satan. Page 28. All the verses are in the book. Those of you who think I'm not reading them, Matthew 16. From that time forth, Jesus began to show unto his disciples how that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer. Hey, suffer. Many things of the elders. Are you with me? Matthew 16, 21. And chief priests and be killed. Have you all got the book? Yes. Who doesn't have the book? Get one. Why don't you get one? Finish. 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 Out of stop. It's not possible. Okay. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be a party. Did you bring something? Yeah, they are, they are. That's the case. <laughs> Same thing. Jerry, open it. Get it for them. I prefer you to have it. Uh, yeah. When you go, you can read it, isn't it? The first, whilst um, how many people are going on? So just the book. Jerry should just open it. Just open it and then you just read the book. So let's read Matthew 16. Those of you who don't have, it says, "And be killed, and raise again the dead." Then Peter took him. Peter took him. Now who took him? Peter. Is Peter a good person or a bad person? Bad or good? Good, good. Peter took him and big, he was a pastor and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Amen. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Amen. Amen. Look, this is the highest form of discernment you will ever have to make. When somebody close to you, somebody dear to you, speaks, and it is Satan speaking. Uh -huh. This one is not uh, uh, it's husband. There are only a few people that can be husband, wife, uh, father, mother, associate, friend. Very close. And who you are sure for years the person loves you. And when the person speaks, you know that the person is Satan. <laughs> yeah, so it's one thing. For him to be able to say, Satan! Me, yeah, I've never rebuked any of my father by calling him Satan before. If I said to you, Satan, 
Will you like it? You get it? Satan. Get me behind. Now, what was Satan trying to do? Now. The booklets. These are booklets. Oh. Booklets is that sacrifice? Sorry. All right. Okay, now listen. Listen, are you there? Listen very, very carefully. What was Satan trying to do? Was he trying to do witchcraft? He was trying to do what? Stop sacrifice. Satan has entered the church in Switzerland. And the only one thing he's trying to do is to stop the sacrifice. That's all. That's all. Satan. And you must identify. And he's speaking through pastors. Yeah. Speaking through pastors. What is this? Why should you do this? Why should you do this? Why should you do that? He has entered the church. And he's speaking and his voice is heard. Yeah. And, and that's why someone said, I know that. I know that. He'll just use you. That's not something. He'll just use you. Oh, oh. I heard somebody talk about it. He'll just use you. Peter, and continue to say words. I commend, I commend you to the airwaves. I know that. Okay. Do you know me? Do you know God? Do you know God? Be careful. Be careful the things you say. And your thoughts. Jesus said, I'm going to suffer and I'm going to die. No, you don't suffer. It's bad. As long as I'm here, this nonsense will not continue. <laughs> as long as I'm here, the nonsense will stop. I am Reverend so and so, I am Pastor so and so. And I'm pointing out to you that this guy is using you. Monkey, they wear baboon, they chop. You are not baboons, are you a baboon? <laughs> But that's all. So through that, there will be no more church in Basel, no more church in the Olten, no more church here, no more church here. Isolation. It's like a place that becomes empty, quiet, you see, barren, frightening, dark, destitute, lonely, because the presence of the devil came to work in our midst and spoke against lay ministry, spoke against sacrifice, spoke against preaching without being paid, playing instruments without being paid, singing without being paid, and all these wonderful things that we were doing for the Lord that make you feel like a fool. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. How many agree with what I'm saying? How many realize what I'm saying? Judas is carried Satan and the Antichrist against the daily sacrifice. Okay, my brothers and sisters. So don't, don't joke around with this concept. It's, it's so foundational. It's, it's, it's the basis on which everything we are doing. It's the basis of everything. So you take it away, what do we have left? We just have, we just have games. We are finished. <laughs> we, we can only be in Geneva where you have job, WHF, whatever. Mm. <laughs> Are so now, I'm going to ask you to go, some of you, you know, listen to me. Listen to because even if you're a fool, you know, the Bible says that obey your father. For that, for this is right. Even if your father is a fool and you obey him, you are blessed because God has put a certain blessing even on the foolishness of your father. Right. So that even when he speaks his foolishness, it is the right thing to do what he says. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I tell you. Sometimes you say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's the right thing to do. Obey your father. For this is right. That's the right thing. You think about it. How old is your child? 
Five, what is right for your child in this world? What's right for your family or child? What you say is what is right. Any other variation is probably not right. What his friend told him in school, what he watched on television, is that right? What he saw on his phone, what he saw playing whatever, which one is right? It's what a man is saying, that's the right thing. In this world, you know what your father is doing, it's what is right. It's such a, it's even your stupidity is what is right for you. Your, your absolute madness is still the rightness for you. That's, that's the blessing that God has given you. That's the blessing that God has given you. Is the right thing. That's right. This is right. That's what's right. And how is it my position? All of you will be in my position one day. As a father, you will be parents, you will be mothers, you will be fathers. You will see all the things that I'm saying. Okay? okay. So let's sacrifice again. Can we, can we go to Germany? We can. I'm not far. I'm not, I'm not saying you're far. Yes. You stop eating francs, you eat euros. <laughs> eat euros. Instead of eating francs, you eat euros. I, so that I look at the people who work in the United States, so I ask them, when I talk, I realize that even, I would not even bother to ask you to even make some maneuvers, but there are too many UNs and different places that you could be, you could work at. I remember when, you see, and that's the thing, when you obey God and you prosper, in the opinions. People think that you went there because of money. Yeah. But all the people that have said, they have, they, have, they have been so blessed. One missionary, he was he used to work in England, he was a businessman. I sent him to an African country. Recently, he told me, he said that, I am worth more. He was rich then. He said to me, I am worth more <laughs> than when I was in the UK. I'm talking about a, a, a businessman, a rich person. I knew he was rich because of what he used to give me. Yeah. That's how you can know whether when somebody has not yeah. okay. those who don't give but they don't have anything to give. Because <laughs> <laughs> they are Swiss. And it's coming and saying things about Swiss. Look, I am more Swiss than most of you. Yeah. 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 Exactly yeah. Swiss. Yeah. And Paul in his Bible, he said. I have heard a report that the Christians from Crete, they, he sent titles to Crete, he said the Christians are slow belly, and they are this, and they are lazy, and they are that. So that in groups of people you have certain spirits. Mm. Yeah. For a Swiss person will open his palm and give you five francs. <laughs> that is the result that I waste my money on. <laughs> That thing seeps into the church. Yeah. <laughs> what was I telling you? I was telling you something. Okay. Germany! I'm sending you to Germany. God told me, go to Germany. Oh. On the way here. Oh. Yeah, on the way here. Oh. Not like Germany. Oh. Germany. Oh. Germany. Oh. This is the next thing that God wants to do. Mm. Yeah. I know it's also a hard place. This is what God wants to do. You have to go there. And I, I want to just obey it. Yeah. I want to people to go and find jobs there. Move into the towns. Let's believe God. Build churches all over Germany. I told Pastor Richard, bring me your people from the UK. Let them come there. I want people. As Switzerland, we need to have examples. Yes. And I want these young people, let me tell you, you are the next pastors in this church. Yeah. Yeah. Our, heads, our heads are getting changing color. Can you see that? Yeah. But last day, two days ago, I was very sad. I was speaking to a, a pastor. And he was talking about you young guys who are coming up. We need fathers, this, 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 and some of the older guys, the younger guys. Older. I was talking to the older guys, the younger guys, the older guys. I said, so bad guy for seven uh, The older guys, the older guys. I was so sad. I didn't say anything, but I was very sad. Ooh, today I'm being categorized as older guys. When you look at my face, I'm like, oh. No, 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 no. Oh, that is slow. 
Are you listening? Yes. Next chapter, sacrifice. Germany. Tell your friend, the man has not forgotten about the Germany that he preached. <laughs> now, chapter 4. This is a, how many are understanding that it's a mighty foundation of the church? Yeah. Now, the next substitute sacrifice. This is what the Antichrist will do. Daniel 11, verse 31. Arm shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary and take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. All right? Now, what they actually did was that they put a pig. Do you get it? Swine. On to the, whatever. Turn to uh, page 34. People who do not sacrifice to God, sacrifice to something else. Yeah. Everybody will sacrifice to something. I'm reading, but the question is, what will be sacrificed and to whom will this sacrifice be made? All of us in Switzerland have really sacrificed. Yeah. Is it not true? Yes. Look, have you not sacrificed to be here? Yes, yes. your personal life, you go to work all the time. Even, have you not paid a price to be here? Yeah, you work hard, don't you? Yeah. So this has been God's struggle with his people. His people always find something else to sacrifice to. They find something else to sacrifice for except him. So the people of Israel sacrificed to idols, to pigs, to this, but not to God. And today, it's happening again. The people of God, instead of sacrificing their life for God and to God, they have found other things. WHO, I'll sacrifice for you. WIPO, I'll sacrifice for you. United Nations, I'll sacrifice Migro, I'll sacrifice for you. I'll sacrifice for you. UBS, I'll sacrifice for you. Penny Swiss, I'll sacrifice for you. McDonald's, I'll sacrifice for you. We always find something else and we will pay the price. Yeah. You'll be there Monday, Tuesday. Sometimes they say you should stay late, isn't it? Sometimes they say there are meetings, isn't it? And sometimes there's something important coming over time. You have to come early. Me, I've, I've worked in Switzerland before. One time I came here, I went to work and said I was so broke. I went to work somewhere. The most difficult part is. When you have to wake up early in the winter, there's no light. You have to believe that it is daytime by looking at it. That's how you know that it's morning. <laughs> I, you have to look at the watch and believe that it is 6 o'clock in the morning. And you cannot afford to be late. If you are late, you, 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 you can't be late here. Some of you are the latest people in the world, but Switzerland has made you end. <laughs> Look at all that you have sacrificed. Eh? So much. Get up early in the morning. Winter, this, catching a bus, going to work, doing this. Train, this, that. For a few francs. Now God says, okay, come, my son, I want to send you to Congo. <laughs> Lord, Lord. I can get up for WHO. I can do this for 20 years, but for you, for you. Lord, I should do this for you? Lord, you are not worthy of me to do something like that. I can do it for WHO. I can do it for some Swiss francs. But for you, Lord. You are not worthy of my, you know, my time, my life. I can give the best years of my life to the religion. But Lord, I can't do that for you. Lord, you are just somebody we want to come to in heaven. Lord, stay quietly in heaven. We have to do that in our lives. Lord, just relax over there. Don't try to change too many things. We like you.
you, Lord, on Sunday morning. If you like you on Sunday, please stay quietly on Sunday. But we will come there on Sunday. Give an offering. You are cool down. You are speaking too much. Yeah. Yes. You see now. You are prepared to make every sacrifice. Is it? Is my sacrifice to stay in Geneva? People who work in Geneva are sent to Angola. I know somebody was working at uh, is it WHO or where's that refugee who was what? You went to stay in Angola. Ladies are sent to Angola and different places. Isn't it? Stay there sometimes one year, two years. Yeah. They leave their husbands here. And they go. Husband with children, you live here, you go to Angola, war zones. <laughs> And now I come and I say Rwanda. <laughs> I say Lesotho. Then you say, ah. Uh, <laughs> you have to get epilepsy in the church. You don't have epilepsy, but you have to get epilepsy in the church. You have to get epilepsy in the church. Rwanda. Meanwhile, when the UN was sending you, you were prepared to go. <laughs> I have one of my lay pastors. He was sent to, is it Nepal? Nepal. Yeah. He went to work for the United Nations, work at New York. He was working there for some time. They said, Brother, it is time for you to go somewhere. Where? Nepal. Then he was there for some time. They said, Now it's time to go to Afghanistan. Hey! Right now he's there, a pastor in the Taliban. I tell you, he's with the Taliban. One day, a certain church member of our church in New Jersey, he rang the pastor in New Jersey. He said, Alan Pastor, oh, do you know where he was calling from? He was calling from Baghdad. He was calling from Baghdad. During the hottest time of the war, a Ghanaian, he had gone to join the Ancos of Man. So we have sent him to Baghdad. And he called the person who was telling me, said, Look, the guy said, You can die anytime the guy was because of money. And he was saying, I'm sending you to Rwanda, the war is over. Rwanda, the war is in the war is finished, and I'm sending you to Morocco. Antiochus Epiphanes did. He stopped the sacrifice to God and changed it with a pig, which is the greatest offense to Israel. When we go to Israel, you see, you cannot order pork chops there. They don't have pork. When I was in Israel, I asked, Can I, do you have any pork? Because me, I like pork. I don't eat beef. I don't eat all those other things. I just like pork. So I said, Can I have some pork? He said, What? <laughs> It was there that I understood the story of the prodigal son when the Bible said he went with the swine. It meant that he was at the lowest, I mean, faintest condition. And he was feeding, not that he was eating them, he was feeding them. It was a far condition. Amen. Amen. So they took a pig, and instead of sacrificing something holy to God, Exchange it, sacrifice something else. So instead of sacrificing your life to God, you sacrifice. One day I was watching scenes and I saw a lady with a black listed on the eye. Mm -hmm. uh, you know who she was? A journalist. They have removed her eye in Iraq or one of those countries. Yeah. And she's still going. You see a beautiful lady like that with a black eye. One eye with a black thing with a rope going on. These are the prices people pay. And you sit here, you pay all those, but when it comes to work for God, when it comes to come, come, just to come for a child. When it comes to make an arrangement for your children, don't even tell me about those children. Don't even say it. It's such a shame for you to even say it. Ah. Don't even say it.
say it. Preach, Bishop. Preach. I would come and put food on the table that uh, we really have to sacrifice. The rice cost so much from Migro. The tomato cost this. I had to work in the night to do it. The chicken was brought from here. We had to steam it or this and that. We have to. Everything that you have brought, we have with so many explanations. Even the food, we don't like the food again. We won't yeah. eat it again. Yeah. Too many explanations before yeah. you come to sit here. Yeah. Don't come with your children and what we are. I have four children. Four. One. I have four children and a lot of spirituality. Don't mention those children to me. Ah. Don't talk about what you are saying. Do you know when we started rearing children? Do you know when we started rearing children? <laughs> you think I shouldn't say it? I'll say it! Don't mention it! Don't mention your work, what you have to do. As I have come, I have not mentioned so many things. I have said, I don't like it when we have to say, I did this, I did this, I did this. When that thing happens, there's something wrong. Don't miss my school, man. Do you know the school that I've been to? Do you know the school that I went to? Do you know how I suffered? A school where they, they think the more you suffer, the better it's going in. You don't know. Threats and what kind of for seven years, medical school, dissecting dead bodies, following flies, from this, everything can be done, can be done, doing it, working the night, delivering babies. Going to the world emergency world, doing all that, combining it with being a pastor and starting the church which you are enjoying today. Mm. Being threatened, they threatened me that I will not pass my exams. Wow. Because of the church, I could not, I could not drive my car into the hospital's campus. They threatened me that I will not pass. I, I was standing, the doctor, as I was standing outside the door, he was talking about me. He said, That, that guy and those they will not pass the exams. I don't, I, I always mention this, I didn't mention this. Thing. But I wrote his name in the Bible. I wrote it by a particular Psalm 80. One of the Psalms. I wrote his name in the Bible. I applied that Psalm to him. That's right. The next time I heard of him, Anne Roberts were in his house. You said I was not that's why. Yeah. And when I came and came to the exam, because of the church, I saw him. I came to him. I passed everywhere except where he was. And he marked me down. Oral exam. Medicine. Clinicals. And when they went for the, the interview, they said, ah, he's bad, this excellent, this, this, this. Only you high. So what, what happened? What did you do? I said, no, no, he's, he's, he's excellent. I was the top five of the whole uh, medical school. Wow. Top five. They called me back to come without going to district to go and work there. Yeah. They won't want to finish me off. Do you know what I've done before I became? And all two that I've started this church, this same church that you are enjoying to see. When you come here, I don't want to hear of children of your job, your job that you are a chairman of a meeting. You may be a doorman for the meeting, I don't care. I don't want to hear who's chairman you are. I don't want to know about it. All of us have. How do you think this is okay? He's come from Barcelona. He has come from Hamburg. We have not paid anything for him to come. We have not asked him to come. They have made all the moves to just come. But they hear that I'm coming here. You drove, they drove here. Did you also drive from Barcelona? You flew. Yeah. We have not paid for them to come. Or anything like that. They just come. And you hear it here. Lausanne and Geneva. Lausanne and Geneva. I thought about that. Those seven years, from, seven hours from Amber to come here. God is so excited. And then you have to come with your explanation of your children, your kids, your job, your dad. It's not like that. It's plain, they, they, they. Do you think I want to eat your food when you put your food in front of me and you explain to me this rice is from God and normally we get it from Migo at 14 20, but we have to buy it at 19 80. <laughs> normally we buy it from God, but we have to buy this one from Migo. And this chicken, we, we bought it from Placet. <laughs> Are you there or you've gone home? <laughs> Migration, immigrants, page. What is that? What are you laughing at? Hey! <laughs> 
sacrifice of immigrants, P37. One day I met a certain guy in Amsterdam. And I asked him, will you come to church tomorrow? He said, no. I said, why? He said, well, I'm busy and I'm tired. And I want to rest. But as we were chatting, he told me how he came to Amsterdam. He said, from Takrade Harbor. You know Takrade? He said, he said, he said, Harbor Town, Ghana. He said, he went on the ship. Came on the ship. And was coming. And the captain of the ship caught him. And brought him back. Or sent them back. He said, the third time, the captain caught him. I don't know whether it was in the engine. It was in the engine. You see, instead of being in the room, instead of being in the cabin, it was in the engine of the ship. And they, they found him there. Yeah. And then he said they threw him into the water. In the middle of the sea. Full of sharks and everything. And he said from the middle of the sea, the ocean, he swam, he saw the land. And he swam. I'm not, it's not his fairy tale. No, you know the person. He swam from the ocean through the currents, the sharks, everything. He came to the land. And when he came to the land, he saw some people. He asked them, Where is this? He said, This is Liberia. He did it for the fourth time. He went inside the engine again, and this time he was experienced. They were not able to catch him. When the ship arrived in Amsterdam, he, he came out. He said, When I came out, I'm free. He, said, he went, he got a white girl, he married her. Then he took out his red past. That's what he said, You see, I'm now Dutch. Yeah, he's happy here. Yeah. Free. This is the price that he's paid. Mm. But he cannot lift his ass. Excuse me. Whatever. He cannot lift his bottom. Huh? Is it the right word? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Verse 20, what does it say? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. They are also sacrificing. But what are they sacrificing to? The devil. They are sacrificing for the kingdom of their wealth, their wealth to advance and to move on. Amen. Amen. Bankers and accountants, pilots. Hmm? Travel all the time. You never know what is under the plane. The Panam plane that was bombed. One Panam fell into the water from New York. It fell over Long Island and came into the water. They found the pilot. The pilot was in his chair. With his seatbelt on in the chair like that, sitting deep down in the water. Because they didn't know what, what was in the plane. And they do it every day. It's nothing. But when we say do this for God, and tennis boy. Amen. Amen. All right, all right, all right. Page 41. The sacrifice of the dead. People sacrifice for funerals. Amen. Is it it? Now, finally, we are going to end with this for tonight. John chapter 12, verse 23, page 43. Sacrifice the master key. To fruitfulness. Amen. Amen. Jesus answering said unto them, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. Amen. Hey. hey. Now, when you hear many messages, 
There comes a time that you become a seed. A seed is the potential. Did you hear me? When you hear many messages over and over and over again, it condenses in your heart and you become a seed. And seeds form within you. Now all these condensed, repeated messages of the word of God in you, that is a seed, cannot be useful to the world. Except the seed that is in you and actually you are the seed. Falls into the ground and dies. Which means undergoes some kind of decay. So Jesus Christ was a great seed to this world. But he had to go into the world, the ground, and die. No matter how great you are, and no matter what you do, you need to come to the place where you die for God. So all of you lay pastors, you must be at a place where you can die for God. Otherwise, there is something that is missing. Jim, are, are you hearing me? Yeah. It's great. You are a nice pastor. I hear you. But there is something that you lack. Like, and that you lack like is what I'm reading about. Because when I say to you, come now, we may have, have, have you, you may see me for a long meeting. <laughs> At which meeting I will fall asleep. There won't be any meeting. <laughs> Don't say anything that is not. Yeah. Oh, Pastor Richard, am I saying something? <laughs> yeah. It's easy to say all these verses and quote them. But they should stay and preach them. And God says, do this now. That's what you see. So me, I don't trust anybody unless the person moves. And what I mean, if I say, come, so, oh, come, I'll come. When I see you moving, then I know it's true. Good general. Yeah, and I, I believe that that's why this one I'm waiting for him to move. Amen. So there's, there comes a time, a time to die, a time when he comes a bishop. Here I am, send me. So he said, I want to work for that. Come to Ghana. I'm in Ghana. <laughs> Come, report. I'll give you work. You will never rest till you die. I'll give you work. You cannot finish it. You want to work? Yeah. I'll give you more work. You, you will not finish working before you die. I tell you, you come. All the people that work with me, the, the problem is they don't rest. Rest not. The work of God. Eh? Nobody knows what it is like until you start doing that. You see that. I went with some people to South Africa recently, and I was coming back. And I just we have a very different impression when you travel and come. But they have not sat down from the moment we arrived in South Africa till we were back on the place. Because when we arrived back here, you see, I came from the airport. I, last night, it's the same time in South Africa still. Because I left there around 4 or 5. And I flew when I arrived here. There's nothing like it. I know something when they fly and they come, I have to sleep. I have to rest tomorrow. Then we work. If I do that, I don't know when I'll go home. So as I arrive, I'm on my feet. Yeah. yeah. And I'll be on my feet until uh, I finish. And I'm out. That's right. Huh? Yeah. And then wait and cross and check, delay and come. Get here at 12. Yeah. You get it? Yes, sir. And they were surprised. They said, oh, we thought we would go shopping. There's nothing like shopping. Hey. Shop where? Which, which, which shop am I going to go to? As I'm here, from here, I'm straight to the airport. Which shop? Is it micro or co op? <laughs> I 
Which, which, which shop am I going to go to? Lausanne shopping, where? When? At which point will I go? You haven't thought about that. So you may not, so that you, when you are outside, you have a feeling, oh yeah, fly, fly here, there, this, this, this. Come small, that's what I say, you come. You say you want to work for God, come, I mean, come. When you come and give you work, so that we all work for God, yeah. Say so you want to do something for God, come, I'll send you somewhere. I'll be Noah. Yeah. So that you go. But for now, I'm just sending you to Germany. I'm just saying, I'm not sending you far, and I'm not sending you to be full time to be paid by the church. So just go and live there. So, in other words, just relocate. Because of God. Why don't you try doing something for God? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rigid Man. Mm -hmm. Ask Mr. Rigid Man sitting there. Mr. Rigid Man. <laughs> Mr. Rigid Man. Why don't you try doing something for God? For a change. somebody from Geneva to go to Paris. Somebody who speaks French. Yeah. Who, who here speaks French? Or Lausanne. Who here speaks French? Stand if you speak French. Stand up. Who is great? Who is great? What's two minutes, man? Two minutes. We should just give it two minutes. Why not? It is two of them. Oh, of six of you, we go there. Now, young guy, you have the time. Who is Pedro? Who is Pedro? <laughs> you are not married. You don't have a wife. And, and you are a what? And you have a wife? Ah, oh, you are free. <laughs> and then you are who? Peter. Peter. You have a wife? Ah, ah, you don't have troubles. And you? Someone. Someone. You have a wife? Beloved? Yes. Beloved? Ah. Oh. Sabine. And you are somewhere. Wow. Oh. When are you going to marry her? One year and six Uh, 
Your name is what? Tickless. Tightless. Tickless. 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 There's a golf ball called Tickless. 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 Golf ball. Tightless. Okay. So can I let you guys recruit to See these foundations, you sacrifice, you lay pastors, you preach all the things, you do them. Yeah. Follow the word. Try. Be surprised. You, you don't know. You see, Pastor Richard, he's now a, a bishop elect. Mm -hmm. He was in Ghana, he was, he was nothing. He just around in the office. I said, Pastor Richard, would you like to go? He said, yeah, why not? You want to go, see what you can do. And look at what he has done. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. My wife went for, my wife went for, don't tell me if I make it, in Leeds, yesterday. There were more than 1,000 women oh. in Leeds. The whole city was colored yellow and black. Oh. All the people they were watching them. More than 1,000. Yeah. Don't tell you can make it. Is it true? Is it not true? Everybody was watching. Police everywhere watching. Yellow and black. The whole city. Everybody is wearing yellow and black. They were amazed. So what I'm saying is that in one person, you see, if you are going to be great, you can't identify it on your face. <laughs> You just you can't see a great person without reference this this no just an ordinary person say, that person is a great person so I don't know which of you is a great guy. No. Pastor Richard, go and choose one. Oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs>
Three children, she said, Is it enough? I want to have my son. Are you serious about waiting for me? Are you serious? Are you serious? If you are serious, it's enough. More, more. After three, more, more. more. Huh? Are you serious? By the how many do you have? Three. You want more? Let me tell you, there is no joke here. Mm, yeah. You can ask these people. We had a camp by two chairs there. I said, ah, sure. I said, I said sit on it. If you go. There is nobody left in it. All those people. All those camp addicts and all. Last one, I have a And you see, it's because I love you that I'm sending you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is definitely to be said. You can't just people sometimes think I don't like them, that's why I say the opposite. Yes. Because you will never become what you can become. Oh, yes. You will yes. never become you sit amongst us all the time, but you will yeah. never become yeah. who you are. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> 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 mm.
Are you afraid? Don't be afraid. All my life I've been encouraging. One day I went to America, the church in Seattle, and I preached, and there was a pastor that said something about me that I've never heard anybody say about me before. But I took note of it. Because sometimes you don't even know your calling. He said something to somebody. He said that he's a pastor who had invited me, he had a preacher. He said that his calling is to challenge people to work for God. Yeah. That's all that I do. I'm always encouraging, challenge people to do something for God. Yeah. I never heard anybody describe me that way. His beloved was like Sabine. She was just there. There's no married, whatever. And then I said, come, you don't have anywhere to stay. So you have to stay with her. So come, we will marry. We will marry you now. <laughs> so we got a, 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 an apartment. We said we went there. <laughs> we went there. We went there. In North London. And there. The sitting room. He arranged the sitting room chairs. Two here. Two here. He said, Come. We invited five people. Isn't it? We were six in you know, the room. <laughs> six. The bride, the groom, and then three people. We prayed. They signed. We prayed. Took the vows. The first wedding. So that he could be there. So that he could be there. And I'm telling you that today, we had a women's daughter in Kamek. Not in London. Not in London. Not in Leeds. Far north. Far north. About six hours. And there, more than 1,000 uh, women, yellow and black, daughter in with my wife. My wife whom I married. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Isn't it? You never know what God can do. And we came back after one year, Pastor Richard had grown fat. <laughs> I said, Pastor Richard, what are you doing? How many people were there in the church? There were not too many people in the church. About eight or nine people. Because Pastor Richard had been eating sausages. <laughs> Love God. You love God. You sure. You love God. 
Βουβουλαδίκοτα. Germany people, we are still waiting to oh. see you. Invasion of who are those here who speak German? To the right. To the right. German speaking. To the right. Are you not learning German? Are you sure? Are you sure? But you need to speak German to go to Germany. No. The Germans they will not come to you. Once you speak their language, you speak German. Oh, which are you from? I grew up in Switzerland. Where did you grow up? Um, partly in Nigeria, partly in Ghana. Partly in Nigeria, partly in Ghana. Mm -hmm. And how many years have you been in Zurich? Oh, in Switzerland. Um, yes. You know, it's supposed to be six, but three years was in Ghana. And, uh, three years. and you speak German? Fluent. Yes. Can you preach in German? Can you preach? Can you preach? Is possible. Everything is possible. Yeah. 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 How old are you? I'll be 21 in June. Oh, fresh oh. person. <laughs> and my sister here? You speak German? Yes. Swiss German? Are you Swiss? Yes. Wow. To which church are you from? Brighton. Brighton. Nico Church? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Sister Mighty. Is that your name, Sister Mighty? Not a mighty. Go and lay hands on him. But a mighty has laid hands on Sister Mighty. Mighty foundation. Mighty foundation. Nikopo. How old are you now? 42. You are getting to 50. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you are much younger. It's powerful. Father, thanks for these wonderful people. I pray for them that they make it possible and real. In Jesus' name. All right, sit down. Okay, 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 okay. We are going to end here, and uh, we are starting at 6 o'clock in the morning. Is it too long? <laughs> too early? You wake up early? Okay. So, we have done one of the foundations. We have six more to go. What are the six, seven foundations? Number one is what? Yes. Number two is what? Lay ministry and full time. I'm adding lay ministry and full time ministry. They are both our foundation. Lay ministry and full time ministry. I'm going to talk about both of them. Okay? But number three is what? Tithing. Wow, we did one of that today, isn't it? Now, number four is what? Remember. 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 Amen. 
Oh, I love these French guys who just came for. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love these guys. I feel something. Spirit. Father, bless them. You know something I pray for my children? I said, Lord, when I'm home, I said, give them an opportunity to stand before you. Because you see, not all children stand before God to do something for the Lord. We pray, Lord. I pray for them that they will, they will, they will stand before God. Pray for the Lord. Amen. 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 Wow. Next time, which is what? How many will agree with me that we are? I'm going to teach you on loyalty. We are going to drive out any disloyal people yeah. by the signs. Yeah. Yeah. We are not going to wait for it to be full blown. Like some of these guys who have broken our churches and taking most of the members away. Is it not true? Yeah. We had nice churches in where, 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 where? Huh? No chapter two, they've taken the people. No chapter, somewhere, somebody has taken some of them. Ali Kantu, somebody has taken Baden, they've taken a large section of them away. And where? Bolton, taking a check away. Yeah. Huh? They've taken it to where? They just went away and let people follow them. You get it? That's. Huh? With sand. Yeah. So we are going to we are going to deal with science. We are not going to wait for anything to grow. When you show some science, that's what they like. You don't come for me. You don't be tired. Don't, don't. No, you just react. Don't blame us. We are hypersensitive now. <laughs> At least we have hypersensitivity reaction. You need to give us parenting or something to cool us down. Serpent that I can't be a professor, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. serpent ah, that, the serpent that we don't even deal with in 2000 and, uh, 2006, like 2008, to become a dragon. Then it became a dragon. That's why I say that don't joke with the jokes. You think that it's a joke, but it's a prophecy. Mm. Uh, you see, maybe there's another person which I don't want to stand here today. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. 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 Maybe one day, through this, like this, as if we are joking, all over these French countries in Africa, yeah. you see churches working, so many things. Don't joke. Mm. Never know. My, my mother in law is a teacher. And one of the main things that she says, we can never tell how a child will turn out. You don't know by looking at them. In the class they are sitting, the president is sitting there. You think he's a fool. He doesn't pass maths. He doesn't pass English. But he's the next president. Next one is what? Foundation. Closeness. Huh? And when there's no closeness, what happens? Severe. Reduction in what? Resulting in what? What we could have been. That is actually a quotation from the final quest. Wow. Yes. What we are writing is a quotation from the final quest. The last chapter. Huh? Unselfishness. Unselfishness. The last one. Amen. Amen. All right. What's the last one? Seven. How many do you have? Seven. Seven foundations. No, no. Women are great. I have foundation for us now. Amen. You have foundation, but not in this message. This is the next time. Mighty foundations too. <laughs> so, I 
I hope when I come, not tell me that your child, your job, you are a chairman. And what's the case? Your grandmother, your mother, swine flu. Maybe by the horse flu, you come. What I'm saying, I'm not saying it too much. Oh. No. Yes, I come, I don't say anything. I come, I don't say anything. I come, I don't say anything. Hey. Now, I will not be quiet. What? I sit with you. You are sleeping. I'm eating with you. you are, I am so boring to you that you are falling asleep oh, when I sit down. Mercy. 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 Amen. Amen. Stand on your feet. Hold your neighbor. Say, I'm glad I sat by you. You were good company. But now we can stay away. Stand your neighbor. Don't be worried if it applies to you because it is true. How many feel that some animals are dying in the land? Jesus' name. Father, thanks for your blessing as we go. God bless you. Six o'clock to start.